Um, so my name is Gonzalo, and I'm here to talk about solidity in between Alex and Christian. So my only hope is that I do not make a fool of myself. Uh, yeah, let's talk about optimization. Optimization is relative, right? Um, if we think about cars, uh, we can optimize for the fastest car, and that would probably be a Bugatti Chiron, right? Or we can optimize for the biggest amount of Swarovski crystals on the surface of a car. This is also optimization. So main point here being that settings and constraints can turn things upside down. Uh, let's make better than just talking about this is uh, showing it. So let's make this a little bit more interactive. Uh, bear with me here. Like, let's pretend we're launching Salt Up would be the equivalent of like um, H Top for Solidity. And I want you to guess which of these is better. So in terms of resource uh, spending, anyone want to take a guess? Right or left? Left. Why? Well, um, to be honest, like here, we only can see like storage, right? So we can be good neighbors to the Ethereum dry state and try not to waste more space than we need. So we'd probably go with that one since those are tightly packed and they would only waste one slot in storage, right? But so this is the right one because it actually wastes less storage. But what if I do this? What about now? Any guess? No? Here, uh, we don't care anymore about storage, right? Because we care about our clients. We care about gas. We care that our clients don't pay, us, uh, pay the, 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 the minimum amount of gas possible. So in this case, the one that's best is the one on the left. Because if we go and see what um, opcodes these two functions are compiled to, you'd probably see that the one with the UIN aid is compiled to a lot more opcodes because you need to mask it out of the storage slot. So we turn the tables around, right? Now, what if I say this? Again, we turn things around. Uh, so the one that uses less gas is the one on the right. Because uh, what they'll do is that here, you actually have to use three S store operations because these are allocated to each one uh, a 32 byte storage slot. And the one on the right can feed only one. And at the end of the day, it will only be one S store at the end of the function. Um, what about this one? Yeah, so this one, you'll be surprised. It's the one to the left. Because again, we only make one S load, right? The other uh, one will actually fetch from storage twice. Uh, and they are costly opcodes, right? If we do only one S load, we'll be better off. So get it into memory and then use it how many times you want. Yeah. Uh, no, this is this is these results are with the optimizer turned on. Uh, a tip now, when you're using constants, make sure you use literals. Uh, don't use constant expressions. Don't think that just because you're using the constant keyword, if you're doing a catch act to 56 hash, uh, it will not. Uh, use the SHA-3 opcode, because it will. It will be evaluated at, at runtime, and the SHA-3 opcode is costly. And you should just pre-compute that and have it as a byte 32 literal, right? So use literals wherever you can. Also, make sure not to use public in every storage var. Because they are they ultimately, they'll clutter the bytecode with the getter that you probably won't need. Um, the whole lesson taken from this is that you actually have to analyze each um, situation separately and carefully, because uh, it'll be different every time. Now, if we think in a more architectural uh, kind of way, if you're uh, deploying a, lar a lot of large, uh, the same large contracts over and over again, then you probably can make use of a delegate call proxy, right? Um, 
I'm sure you all know about this. Uh, a proxy would do a delegate call, fetch the code from the large contract, and you'd save a lot on deployment costs. Right? The, the full delegate call proxy bytecode would be something like this. And um, this might be a personal opinion, but I believe that interface proxies should be as lean as possible. Uh, they shouldn't have to deal with any logic at all. So if you want to build upgradability, don't do it in the interface proxies. Uh, make sure that you have like a, another one to deal with that. Uh, make sure that if the interfaces that you're showing to your client are the most auditable, most simple thing you can, you can provide them. Now, another thing that uh, I was thinking about is that when you have a proxy, you cannot make use of a constructor, right? And since we're um, here hosted by Gnosis, I took the Gnosis as, a, as an example. Uh, what you have now is that you have to have like a setup function that you can call within the same transaction and act as a constructor. Now, the reason why this is not as good as an actual constructor is because you have to make sure that uh, there are certain constraints to that function, right? That it can only run once, because that's what constructors are supposed to do. And relaying that, those checks to the application part instead of just relying on the way the EVM is supposed to work is maybe not the best option, right? So what we do is we can take the large contract that we just talked about, uh, could be no so safe, we actually get the constructor bytecode out, we get the runtime bytecode out, make both of these deployable, and basically we have like a proxy that now makes two delegate calls, one in its constructor and another one uh, for its runtime bytecode. Uh, what this would mean is that we could probably just uh, use a constructor uh, in the Gnosis safe contracts. And this is all, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>